What is going on guys, it's Bucky and welcome to your fifth Premiere Pro tutorial and in this lesson I'm going to be talking to you about monitor panels. Now what a monitor panel is, is it's basically an area where you can preview your work. It's basically like a mini DVD player built right into Premiere Pro. For example, if you look in the top right you can go ahead and play it, if you hit this button, and then it turns into a stop button. Or you can go ahead and you know step forward if you need to, fast forward, rewind. Basically like a DVD player, except this is a really fancy one. So you're saying, all right, at first glance, these kind of look the same. This source monitor and program monitor, which is in the top middle and the top right, you can't really see a difference between them just by you know glancing over them. But there is a difference, and that's this. With the source monitor right here, and if you can't see it, just go ahead and double click one of your sources in your project panels and it'll pop up. The source monitor lets you preview a single file. So for example, if you have a bunch of different files in here and you wanted to look for one specific video clip, you can go ahead and double click each of these and they would pop up in the source. So you're saying, alright, is this the video clip I want? Huh, no, that's with Bucky. I'm looking for one with Lola closer to the camera. So let me double click this. Ah, that's the one I want. Or if you have a bunch of images that you, you know, you want to find the one that fits your program, just go ahead and double click all those and be like, oh, so that's the thing. So it pretty much is like a preview of whatever file you're looking for. So the program monitor is a little bit different. The program monitor lets you preview your entire final project, pretty much lets you preview your entire movie after it's pieced together. So for example, if we go ahead and play this in the source monitor, it's only going to preview this raw file, this only one video clip. But in our timeline, after we piece together the title and this video clip and this video clip, and we go ahead and hit space, as you notice, this program is changing. That's our entire movie pieced together. So that's the difference between the source monitor and the program monitor. This one in the top middle lets you only preview a single file, and this one in the top right lets you preview your entire project. But that's not all there is to cover. I have all these dumb widgets and numbers and stuff that we have to go over, so let me go ahead and skip over these real quick. I guess I'll start with the program monitor since this is a little bit easier to understand. First of all, you have this number in yellow right here. This is the current time, where you are right now. So if you're saying, all right, I want to put a title in at 10 seconds. You go ahead and scroll your current time indicator right here until this reached 10 seconds, and then you, you might want to move your title over accordingly, like just like that or something. So this is pretty much the current time indicator. So you're saying, all right, what's this one right here? This is the total length of your movie. So pretty much this is where your current time indicator is, but this is the total length of the movie. So if you're saying, all right, I want my movie to be 10 minutes long, then what you need to do is scroll out and move your current time indicator to around 10 minutes, and then you would need to shorten all these clips to right there. So anyways, that is, that is the difference between this first number and the last number. This is the current time, and this is the final project length. And of course, that thing in the middle that says fit, this is the zoom level. If you want, whenever you resize your panels for the video to just fit in nicely, then go ahead and leave that at fit. I do that 99% of the time. However, if for some reason you want to see it smaller, like 10% or really big, like 200%, you can do that too. But usually, just leave it at fit, and then whenever you resize everything, it's going to go ahead and fit nicely. So aside from that, we now have all this crap, all these little things that say mark in, mark out, and all these little weird looking parentheses things. And to be honest, 99% of the time, I don't ever touch any of these six buttons right here. They really annoy me, and you can just edit in the timeline whenever you need to edit right here. But I'm going to go ahead and show it to you real quick. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out. And uh, guys, if you just want to kind of blank out and don't even listen to what I'm saying for the next minute or so, um, you can do that because, again, like I said, I never use them. But if I just skip over them, everyone's going to be mad. Be like, oh, you should go over everything. So, okay. Let me go ahead and drag out 36th and 112, two separate video clips. Now, if I go ahead and scroll out, you can see that these are basically the same length. 
So now I'm going to go ahead and delete 112 and double click it so I preview it in my monitor. Now what this in and out point basically does is it shortens the clip so instead of starting at the very beginning and the very end you can shorten it so if you go ahead and move it to you know two minutes and say mark in and then you move it to eight minutes and say mark out your raw file is now only six minutes long so now when you go ahead and drag 112 out check it out it pretty much took that raw file and shortened it but why did I say never to use that because obviously you're going to need to edit clips the reason I never like to do it like that is because whenever you're editing I'll show you later on you can just shorten clips really easy so all of this stuff is kinda of like messing with clips but don't do it ignore what I just said I hate these buttons right here it's a much easier way that I'm gonna show you in a couple tutorials so aside from that let me go ahead and talk about these buttons right here previous edit point what this means is basically a cut or a fade or something you can just go ahead and hit back and it's going to take you to that point right here so instead of trying to line it up maybe you zoom in and you're trying to line this current time indicator up exactly right here you can go ahead and hit this button and it's going to jump to that previous edit point real nice and neat now this step back just moves one step back or one frame this play button of course a lot of these are self-explanatory it goes ahead and it plays your final movie and then it turns into a stop button you can go ahead and stop it these ones are just like these ones but the opposite now this shuttle and jog is pretty much like fast forward or in this um which is one I never use this one by the way okay this one's shuttle this one's jog if you go ahead and drag this you can move back and forth in your project kind of just like fast forwarding in a kind of weird way but FYI I never use shuttle or jog I just find it a lot easier to move the current time indicator but if you get, want to get some real precise movement you can go ahead and use that if you want so basically the only thing I ever use here is go back to edit point and play and stop everything else you can kind of do with the current time indicator now these last set of buttons right here are is useful some of the time whenever you want to watch something over and over you can go ahead and loop it and then if you play it when it gets to the end it's gonna start all over again if you don't have that on and you go ahead and play it it's just gonna go ahead and stop whenever it gets to the end and you know it's just gonna stop just like that but if you have loop it's gonna play over and over again this next button safe margins if you go ahead and click that you can see two boxes appear on your screen one is called the title safe and one is called the action safe I don't really know if this is a problem anymore since you know everything's kind of up to date technology wise but on the old school TVs whenever you made a movie it kind of cut out some of the edges depending on you know what TV manufacturer or you know maybe you're watching it in the movie theater versus your home it kind of cut out some of these outside edges so this is just saying alright if you want to guarantee that something is going to show make sure it's within these boxes but I never seen anything really cut out and have a big problem so I usually just leave those off one is for the main action and this middle one is for the title but again don't really worry about that too much the output you're never going to use the lift and extract those are kind of editing methods which I'm going to show you guys later the only other useful thing that's going to come in handy is say you're making this video for YouTube and you want a nice thumbnail so what you would want to do is look for a good spot where you know maybe we're saying alright I like the way ooh look at the way I'm looking oh it just moved look at the way I'm looking right now it is excellent I want to use this as my thumbnail whenever people search for videos so you what you would do is hit export frame and this would pretty much give you the opportunity to take this frame and save it as a picture so you can go ahead and export excuse me export frame as a JPEG or a ping and you you know pretty much take this point in time from your movie and save it as a picture so that's all that does turn your movie into a single picture so wow that was a lot of crap to cover so I hope you guys enjoyed that probably not but anyways um thank you for watching in the next tutorial I'm gonna talk to you about how to add some special effects to your movie and it's gonna be really cool so again thank you guys for watching don't get subscribed and I'll see you guys in the next video